What's up guys, Andre here, and today I'd like to take a look at a GraphQL server package called GraphQL Laravel. This is similar to the Lighthouse package, which we used in my GraphQL series to build out an app. They are both similar in that they are both GraphQL servers. However, they take a different approach, which we'll take a look at throughout this video. If you haven't seen at least the first video in that GraphQL series, definitely check it out as I'll be making comparisons between both packages. So these packages both make use of the GraphQL PHP package, which is a vanilla PHP implementation. Uh, so this GraphQL Laravel package is more similar to that, whereas the Lighthouse package sort of conforms more to the GraphQL spec and makes use of heavy directives. So if you don't know what that means, don't worry, we'll be going over everything in this video. Okay, so let's get started. Let's install this. I have a Laravel app running already and I didn't do anything to it yet. So let's compose required it. Okay, let's publish the config. Okay. And that is it. Okay, so let's do some quick setup. In that first video, uh, where we took, took a look at this Lighthouse package, which is right here, we took a look at an example where it was a basic blog implementation. So the models, the models we had were users, comments, and posts. So we'll do the same thing. Uh, we'll just have users and posts and the relationship will be a user has many posts and a post belongs to a user. So let me quickly set this up in this example, which is a blank Laravel app. So let's do this quickly. So let's make a post, make model, sorry. And let's make a migration, okay. So let's just copy and paste stuff. So the user has many posts. So let's go to user has many posts. Uh, a post. Let's go to the post here. And let's just do a belongs to relationship. And like I said, we won't do comments here it's the same thing same relationship between posts and comments but we'll just keep it simple okay and let's just steal the migration so it's create posts table yep so let me just grab all of this and it should be create posts here we go Okay, so that should do it. And let me just set up my environment file. Uh, I have one created already. So root, root, oh, sorry. It's a GraphQL Laravel example, root. Okay, let's migrate and hope everything works. And it does, cool. And let me just quickly whip up some seed data. I'm just gonna do it manually in the database. So let's make a few users. And let's make a few posts. Okay, so I have two posts here, two for Andre and two for John. Okay, so now if you take a look at the original package, so let me just close these. Okay, so if you remember on in the first video of the original package, we spent most of our time in this schema.graphql file. So there are three things, or two things, depending on how you want to look at it, uh, that we have to do here. So the first thing we should do is define the types. And these types are just the models, and they have the same fields on the models. And this is how they are defined. And in the Lighthouse package, they conform to the GraphQL specification. So all of this is the GraphQL specification. 
but it does have some differences in that it uses directives to get things accomplished. In this GraphQL package, GraphQL Laravel package, I mean, it is the same thing, but everything is in PHP. So there's more code to write. So let's go ahead and start doing that. So let's go into the docs and let's take a look here. Let's say create a query. Um, there's no dedicated documentation page like Lighthouse has. Everything is in the readme here. So, so it says first you have to create a type and that's what we want to do. So again, we want to mimic, we'll start with the user, this. Okay, so you have to make a new file in this folder, app GraphQL type, just make this bigger. And then we have to define everything in PHP, like I said. So everything here, we have to define it in PHP. Okay, so let's do that. Uh, I kind of wish this package had a CLI tool to scaffold everything out. Uh, so that's one improvement I think they can improve on. Maybe if I have time, I'll look at putting in a PR. Okay, so where does it go? It goes into app GraphQL type, and it's called user type. So app new folder, GraphQL, and type. Let's make it a folder, type, okay, and new, new file, so user type. So each type is separated into their own file, whereas in this package, everything is in here. Uh, you can actually separate them in different files, but in general, Everything is in this schema.graphql file. So that's one difference. Let's just paste that in. Sorry, I have to open PHP. And let's paste that in. Okay, let's take a look at this from the top. Uh, any other errors here? Okay, looks good. Okay, so all your imports and the attributes and it's just specifying the model, a name, and a description. This is fine. And this public function fields returns an array of fields. So this is the equivalent of this. These are the fields. And see within each field, they have a type. And that corresponds to this. So this field has this type and this exclamation mark means it's required. So to do required, we have to use this non null function. So let's go ahead and do this. So we don't need this alias because the ID is just ID in the database. So we have email, which is a string. So again, that is this. And it's not, it's required here, so it should be required, but we can add that in if we like. Let's add it in. Type string. Okay. And there is no name here for some reason, so let's add a name. And let's put it above email. So let's say name. Name is required too, right? Yeah, same so same thing. Name, string, and description is the name of the user. And let's remove this is me. This is, has to do with authentication, which we won't look at in this video. Okay, so this is just a resolver method. So if you want to return something different from what the actual value of the field is, then you can define a resolver like this in this format and it will resolve it here. So we're not going to do that, but it's nice to have that option. Okay, so let me save this. We have the type defined. And the next thing we did in this Lighthouse package was define the queries. So we'll define the post in a second. Let's just define the queries first. And 
we'll also look at the relationship in a second. So it's, here we have to define all the queries available to the consumer. And the most basic one is just returning all users. So let's see how to do that. So back into the docs. So we have the type defined. And we also have, the, we have to add the type to the config GraphQL, which is already there by default, I believe. So config GraphQL. And there's a section for types here somewhere. So here's a section for queries. And there's a section for types. It's actually not defined. So let's go ahead and do that. So they have these examples here. Uh, so we don't have this. So I'm going to comment this out. And same with, well, when we get to queries and mutations, I'll show you that. But these don't exist. So we have to remove those. OK, so to define the types, we just have to, let me just grab this. And it is a user type. And that lives in app. GraphQL uh, type user type class. Okay. So our type is now defined and now we can make a query. Okay. So yeah, it says you can use the facade. We won't be using that. Okay. So now we can define the query. So let me just grab this again. I kind of wish they had a CLI generator. And this goes into app GraphQL query and it's called users query. So let's do that. App GraphQL query. So let's make a new folder query and new file called users query. I think Is that what it was called users query. Okay. And let's paste this in. And let's take a look what we have. So this is just the name of the query. And this type, let's go back to our lighthouse one. So yeah, this is the name, so users. And this type is what it returns. So in this case, in lighthouse, we wanted to return a list of users. And this is what this is saying. So list of users. So again, it's the same thing. It's just in PHP format. And this arguments function uh, sort of specifies arguments, which can be confusing because this query can list all users, but it can also filter them down to using an ID and email. And in this implementation, we have them separate. So we have one for all users, and then we have one where you can find by an ID. But this one allows you to do both. I'll show you in a second. So after that, this looks fine. This is the resolver. So this is where it gets the eloquent query and retrieves the users. So in Lighthouse, we just used the all directive or the find directive. And you can also use custom resolvers if you want to do it that way. But here, it, it's more of the custom resolvers approach where you've got to specify the query yourself. So this is just checking if there are arguments. Again, I kind of think it's better to separate it out. And then if there are arg arguments, then you just find them using this eloquent query. But if there isn't, then you just return everything. So let's go ahead and see if this works. I think we have to define it first in the config. So yeah, right here. So we have to specify that this is one of the queries. So let's go into our config again. And let's go up here. And again, these don't exist. So let me just comment them out. Same with the mutation, which we'll look at in a second. And let's just paste that in. So it's exposing a user's query here and this is where it lives and all the logic for it. Let me put a comma there. Okay. So now finally, if we go into our GraphQL client and what is this called? 
GraphQL variable example dot test. So this is the original URL I was playing with. GraphQL Laravel example dot test. And let me just erase this. So this is Oh yeah, so sorry, that shouldn't have brackets. Okay, so this should work. And it does, cool. So it's returning all the users in our database. So let me show you the arguments. Uh, so like I said, it does take arguments and they are optional, which uh, should be separate, but let me just show you that it works. And they take two arguments and I think the ID takes precedence. Again, this should be a separate query, but let me just show you. So if I search for ID and they defined it as a string, should be an int, but let's say one and then it should just return Andre. There we go. Okay, let's quickly take a look at relationships because that doesn't work yet. So essentially we'd like to be able to grab the posts from the user and then list that out as well. So let's do that. So the first thing we have to do is define a post type. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to do a new file, post type PHP, and I already have it copied in my clipboard. I'm just going to paste it in. So it's basically the same thing as the user type just specified for the fields of a post. So posts, models post. So a post has an ID, a title and content. And here's the relation, which we didn't take a look at in the user, which we'll do in a second, but we just have to specify the type. So GraphQL type user, and they can see, find it from the config. And it's just this one that we have already. And here's a description for it. And we don't need any custom resolvers or anything like that. So let's save that and it's defined the relationship here too. So I'm going to grab this for the user. I mean, for the post in the user. So right here, I'm going to paste that in. And the relation is posts. So a user has many posts. The type is a list of posts. So we have to do type list of GraphQL type, it's a type of post. Okay. And let me just say a list of posts written by the user. Okay. And I think I have to just import the GraphQL here. And I think it's just GraphQL. And I think I have that in here already. Sorry, in the post type, I mean. And I do have it. Cool. And yeah, I think that's it. Now we have to specify the post. And oh, we have to do the post query as well. So let me just type that, uh, paste that in as well. So let's make a new file here called posts query. Posts query. Uh, PHP and I'm pasting it in, but again, it's basically the same thing as the user's query that we did already. So it is a list of posts. And again, there's an optional argument, which I think should be separate. And to resolve it, you just have to do post all, which is the one we're interested in. But if you want to pass in an ID, you can do that as well. And now we just go into our config. And let's add those. So posts and posts query. And let's add the type. The type is down here. Post, post type. And yes, let's test this out. Save this, refresh. Okay, uh, let's try posts and it's just let's see, title. Okay, so it looks like it does work. 
content. Yep. Okay, so there is ID one. If you want everything, just remove this. And there are all the posts. Cool. So let's try the relationship. So we want the for posts, we want the user associated with it. It looks like it works. And we want the username and email. So there we go. So this post was written by Andre, this one too, this one's written by John and John. And let's take a look at the other way. So let me just comment this out. So query users ID name, but we also want the post. And then we want the title. And that seems to work too. Cool. Okay, now let's quickly look at mutations. So let's go back into the documentation. And let's take a look at this mutation. And it's almost the same as a query, except it's a mutation. So let's go ahead and copy this. And this one is updating the password, but we'll make one for creating a user. So let's copy that. And this goes into app GraphQL mutation. So let's do that. App GraphQL new folder mutation. And what's it called? Okay, we have to make our own say create user mutation. So new file, create user mutation, Not PHP, space this in and let's make changes. Create user mutation, create user. So the type, let's go back to our lighthouse example. So here's a create user. The type is just a thing it returns. So in our case, we want to return the created user. So that's what we're doing here. And the arguments are the things we need to create a user. So here we have a name, email and password. So we don't need this ID, but we need name and email. And I'm just going to paste them in to save some time. And it's basically the same thing. Just we need a name and an email and they are of type string. And then in the resolve function is where it happens. So this is for updating the password. We, we don't want to do that. We want to user create. And then we want a name. And that's coming from args name. So this is what the user is specifying in the GraphQL query. We want an email and we want a password, but we want to make sure that the password is hashed. So we do bcrypt. Okay. Let's see if this works and uh, we have to specify this in the GraphQL file. So there is a section here for mutations. So let me just copy this. Let's paste it in. It's called create user. And app GraphQL mutation. Create user mutation. And I think that is it. Let's see if this works. So let me just do it here. So it is a mutation. Okay. Let's see if it appears. Create user. And then see if, yeah, there you go. Name, email, and password. So let's try this out. Tony Stark. Email. Tony at avengers.com and password is Iron Man. And let's return the ID and the name. 
Okay, so hopefully this works. There we go. It created a new user. And if you just uncomment this, you should see that in the list of users. So let me just change this to users. And let's get to names. There we go, cool. So there you have it guys, we've taken a look at this GraphQL Laravel package so you can build out your GraphQL server. Again, it is a similar package to the Lighthouse package, but takes a different approach and makes use of PHP more. So I think they're both great. It's just a matter of preference. So you try both out and see which one you like better. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Thanks for watching guys. See you in the next one. Okay, thanks, bye.